Hi there and welcome to the 19th workout of the 30 days of 30 minute rows. Now don't worry, you can start at day 19, there's not a problem. Now today's row is going to be a mid-intensity row. So what that means is that you're going to be working hard at one point, but not so much that you're feeling like you're max, okay? It's going to be tough. Trust me, it'll be tough, but you're not going to feel like you're going to have to stop. Now what we're going to do is we're going to break our 30 minutes into 6 minute chunks and we're going to do a stroke rate pyramid. We're going to start at 18 strokes a minute, then after 6 minutes we're going to go up to 22, then we're going to go up to 26, but then we're going to slow down to 22 and then back down to 18 strokes a minute. And our pace is going to change as our stroke rate does. So we'll start around about 2k plus 20 pace if you have a 2k training pace. Now that works out around about 5 out of 10 effort or the amount of exertion you'd feel if you were walking up a constant flight of stairs okay then when we got to the 22 strokes a minute we're going to go five seconds faster and then for the 26 another five seconds faster but as we come down the other side of the pyramid we of course slow down five seconds and then five seconds again so of course that middle 26 strokes per minute chunk is when this is going to feel tough okay that's when everything's going to start to get whoa this is a lot of hard work but then you get to slow down as you get to the 22s and then the 18 so that's what stops this from being a max intensity workout okay now before we get into the workout we have to make sure we're nice and warm so we do a warm-up of course and we're going to do a four minute warm-up but we have to set up our machine first so on a concept two that means heading to the front to the drag factor and setting that to where you want it to be if you don't know where to set it set it between four and five because too low isn't a problem too high is when it becomes a bit of a problem if you're on a non-concept two just set the resistance you get a nice feeling from the stroke but you don't feel like you have to pull and tug and heave against it to get it moving Next up, if you can, set your monitor to eye height so you don't have to look up and you don't have to look down. And finally, set the foot plate height so that you can come into the front of the machine with your shins pointing vertically, okay? If you're set too high in the foot plates, that can be a bit tough. If you're set too low, you can go scooting past or heading past and your backside goes away from you and you lose power, okay? So our four minute warm up, we're gonna start is just enough power as though you were standing up because I want you to work on the connection timing between your feet and your hands. But I've been talking for so long, so let's get into this, okay? In three, two, one, let's go. So round about 20 strokes a minute. Keep that stroke rate low, keep the power low for the time being, and just think about pushing with your feet at the same time that you feel your hands connect to the machine when they kind of bite and you feel the weight of whatever your machine is boom there okay but you want your feet to push at exactly the same time and you want your arms straight and a forwards tilt over your hips so that as you push with your feet that power from your legs surges up into the machine and that's why you want to get the timing right because if you push too soon with your legs, your backside goes away and you suddenly have to use your back and arms instead of those big, powerful legs. All right? And so once you've got that timing feeling okay, you can start to increase that push from your feet and take the exertion up to round about that five out of 10 same exertion as if you were walking up a constant flight of stairs like the Empire State Building or something. Your heart rate is up. You're at about 60 to 70% of your max. Your breathing rate is up, but you really don't feel like you're working hard at all. And this is the starting pace for today's main row. If you don't have a training pace, so start running about this exertion, but then go five seconds faster in the 22s and five seconds faster again for the 26. Let's take two more strokes and then we're gonna put one foot on the ground. So here we go. Unstrap, one foot on the ground, carry on rowing. Now just having one foot strapped in helps your body get into the positions you want to when rowing. So shins vertical at the front, tilting forwards over the hips, not bending through the lower or upper back, but tilting over those hips. Okay, let's change feet. Oomph. 
continue rowing and then just pay attention to that timing still between that push of the leg that's still in make sure it's a good solid push your pace will have come down because you're only rowing with one leg but you still want to connect and feel your legs put some power into the stroke let's do one more and then put both feet back in tighten the straps legs straight and just roll with your back and arms so swing over your hips pull in your arms swing pull push out your arms swing forwards over your hips again swing pull push swing swing pull push swing and it's so important that that initial pickup is done with that back swing not with your arm pull okay now let's roll to the front of the machine arms straight forwards tilt push out with your legs not too powerfully because i want you to co concentrate on the connection timing for your feet pushing and your hands picking up but also holding this forwards tilt and arm straight as you push really try to resist the urge to either pull on the handle or swing your back over your hips too soon Ooh. right okay so as being today's row starts at that 18 strokes a minute 2k plus 25 out of 10 pace then you don't really need to keep on warming up but you can of course pause the video make sure you're nice and warm before starting the main session okay now like i said this is a uh, mid intensity so you're going to be working hard so make sure you, you have a good drink of water before you start and i will see you in half an hour for the cool down and some stretching starting off at 18 strokes per minute and at 2k plus 20 pace okay you ready for this good here we go then in three two one let's go this week or this the past few sessions anyway i've been a bit more about the 18 strokes a minute so hopefully as we glide into today's row you're a bit more used to rowing at 18 if it's something that you're not that comfortable with And there is a real value to these low stroke rate rows by slowing things down gives you a chance to work on your technique but also it lets the that real kind of core fitness side of you build up a little bit the low heart rate low intensity rowing is how you build your foundation fitness and although today we kind of we leave that zone once we go into the 22s and definitely the 26 that's not to say that the 18s today don't have value like I say they'll give you time to work on technique but also hopefully they'll take you a step closer to getting into the right rhythm and flow to really understand and enjoy these 18s because if you're doing them right they're not easy it's not like it's a walk in the park to hit your pace that 2k plus 20 pace at such a low stroke rate you still have to put in a good old push with the legs it's still a powerful shove into the machine because you're recovering and the flywheel is slowing down loads over the amount of time that the stroke recovery takes so this should still feel powerful and rewarding 
from that point of view but because the stroke rate is so low it shouldn't really tax your cardio system too much you shouldn't find your heart rate skyrocketing and that flow thing is the key here and there's loads of different things to come together for it there's your actual technique when rowing there's the rhythm between drive phase and recovery and then there's the flow through the different stages of your stroke and they all come together to allow you to comfortably row at 18 so if you find it difficult to keep the stroke rate this low or you find it difficult to hit the pace at this stroke rate it could well be that one of those aspects is lacking whether it's technique ratio or flow I mean they do obviously feed into each other or these techniques certainly makes a difference for both ratio and flow right so we have less than a minute to go on this 18 strokes a minute interval before we increase five seconds pace and up to 22 strokes a minute now really this is about putting in more of a push from your legs okay I've got such an itchy nose today so a harder push should result in a faster drive speed and that will help your stroke rate increase and your pace too okay last stroke here here we go then 22 strokes a minute so more of a push from your feet oh. and what should happen is that you will add more force into the machine in terms of power so your pace will go up anyway but because of that increased drive speed that you've got if you have a good fluid 2 to 1 ratio between drive speed and recovery you should find that quite easily your stroke rate has increased and as always if you're a little bit lost just follow along with me on the video or the whoosh of my flywheel if you're listening to this on the podcast but hopefully now that we're a minute and a half into this interval you've already hit your rhythm and you don't really need any external reference to hit your rate and pace but I do talk about pace 
especially pace attenuation as being controlled by the legs that you push harder with the legs or softer if you're slowing down I don't say pull harder on the handle because that's not what we're trying to do here your force from your legs goes through the handle obviously but you're not actually pulling until the end and I know well I know a few rowers who swear blind that they need to pull right from the start on the handle or they wouldn't have the pace they have but I still just think what would happen if you pushed with the legs first and then finished with that arm pull surely you'd be quicker but you know what there is a reluctance to change technique especially if you are going relatively fast anyway it's only if you have specific issues either that you've hit a ceiling in terms of your pace or you're getting injured that's when it tends to force your hand and you change I mean if I didn't keep on getting intercostal issues five years ago who knows whether I would have started to look more importantly at my stroke I mean I was already rowing 640 2Ks and even with some work on my technique I only really increased that by three seconds but I stopped getting injured and that was the key for me was reducing the amount of time off that I had to take due to rib issues or intercostal issues all right 45 seconds to go on this second split before we increase again up to 26 strokes per minute and another 5 seconds faster to 2k plus 10 remember it's all from the legs almost there two more strokes one more you ready? here we go so you should hear whatever you row on whether it's concept 2 life fitness water rower whatever you should hear the pitch of the machine increase because you're putting more power in and hopefully that increase is coming from the front as you push your feet into the machine now remember 
these higher stroke rates are really where rhythm comes into play and that's controlled in a really a large way by how you recover so you finish the stroke by pulling the handle into your chest but then you instantly send it straight back out again at the same pace you brought it in at so that gives you your fluid rhythm you're not jerking it away from you it's not hot potato but those hands away help with the forward momentum of your body and that momentum triggers that tilt back over your hips into the forward lean remember you're one o'clock at the front then 11 at the back but you quickly go back into that one o'clock again and that's by getting those hands away nice and rhythmically to help that tilt and then because your hands move away and because your upper body tilts hinges over your hips your weight shifts forwards and with that weight further on to the front of your seat all you have to do is bend your knees and you will slide to the front of the machine now try to get the handle past your knees and your body tilted forwards before you bend your knees because that sets you up in the perfect position for the start of the next stroke with straight arms and that forward lean and you don't have to do anything else to get there if you look down and notice that you're throwing the handle over your knees you're bending them too soon and that will be playing havoc with that momentum shift which helps you with these slightly higher stroke rates okay we have 20 seconds left of this fastest interval or fastest split here we go 
three, two, one. Back to 22s. And five seconds slower. Try to get into your rate and pace as quickly as possible. Really, it is meant to be a little bit tough. Let's slow down. But after one or two minutes, you should settle back in to more of a comfort zone. Things will start to feel more rhythmic. Your breathing will calm down. You'll feel like the whole stroke becomes more fluid, more of a glide backwards and forwards. Remember, you still want to keep good technique, a good posture at both ends of the stroke. So that means your forward lean, but up on your sit bones at the front of the machine. Shoulders <clears throat> past your hips with your hips tilted forwards and your core should be nicely braced and powerful ready for the next stroke. If you feel like you've crumpled to the front, try to really think about being up on those sit bones. Especially if you feel like your hips are tilted backwards as you recover and come to the start of the next stroke. Try and shift that position. So rather than tucked, you're gonna be up, primed into the front of the machine. Because that posture thing is the key when it comes to letting the power flow through your body and into your arms. And then hanging off the handle. Now, I have spent the past couple of sessions trying to open up that concept of hanging off the handle by likening it to what it's like to hang from a pull-up bar where if you were just to jump up to a pull-up bar and hang there with your feet off the ground, 
that's the sensation of the leg drive with arms straight if you were to hang from that bar you wouldn't be bending your arms into a half bend to try and hold yourself up you'd let yourself just hang with straight arms to give yourself the best chance of staying up there for as long as possible and I'm going to show that in tonight's form check Fridays dated 19th of November 2021 two strokes one more back down to 18s so that last six minutes of 22s will still have felt harder than the opening 22s or the second interval but you should still have managed it without crumpling and then these 18s will feel comparatively harder just because of the past 20 well 25 minutes now worth of rowing but I still want you to put in the same pace so if you are working off the effort scale whatever pace you started rowing at that you thought was 5 out of 10 this one you do at the same pace so even though the effort this time might feel closer to 6 maybe even 7 out of 10 you hold your original 18 strokes a minute pace this is the downside of using the effort scale is it's easy to kind of play with it and become kind of take it easy on yourself that's not the point and it's why having a 2k training pace is so vital because no matter how fatigued I may be right now in this closing 18 strokes a minute section because I'm rowing at 2k plus 20 pace which doesn't change just because I'm fatigued it gives me the training effect that I'm meant to have so like I said at the beginning this is a mid intensity workout on my pyramid and there's only three tiers and they start at 5 out of 10 because 1 out of 10 is sitting on the couch watching TV 2 out of 10 is walking to the kitchen to get more cheesy puffs 3 out of 10 is going for a walk outside 
four out of ten is going for a walk up a slight gradient or a few lumpy hills but then five out of ten is when you start doing things that put you out of breath and so five and six out of ten is the bottom tier on my intensity pyramid <clears throat> then seven and eight is when it becomes hard to talk and you have to concentrate on really pushing to maintain stroke rate and pace which should be how it feels right now and then 9 and 10 out of 10 should be self-explanatory that that is top tier max workouts where you're putting everything into the row and you're really having to hold on in order to complete even if that means that you actually run out and start to fade the very fact that you've gone to max is the point and they can sometimes be single rows like a 2k or intervals like 30 seconds on 30 seconds off which is one of the upcoming 30 days of 30s sessions one more stroke oh. there we go oh. possibly I'm not the most divergent conversation today I was all about technique and intensity pyramids but I think every now and then it's worthwhile doing a refresher course so I hope you enjoyed that one and hopefully you saw what it meant at the beginning about that 26 strokes a minute being the wonder kid of that workout that's the one that pushes you and makes you work hard and you have to hold on and you have to kind of embrace the fact that hang on this is quite a lot of hard work but I know I can get through it and it's that little question mark in your head that says oh hang on this is working a bit hard can we keep on going that you need to be able to kind of ask yourself that question and answer yes I can keep going and that's what then leads to you becoming uh, a better rower whether that's turning of performance or whether that's just about being able to row for longer and, and stuff okay and remember the longer you can row the fitter you get it's kind of as simple as that <laughs> or the fitter you are the longer you can row the longer you can row the fitter you are so right let's get ourselves into a two minute cool down now we're going to do this round about same pace or well, pretty much the same pace as the 18 strokes a minute we were just doing it okay but make sure and just ease off through this two minutes to let your body cool down so here we go then in three two one let's go now remember as much as this is only a two minute cool down recovery really is the key to your enjoyment and longevity longevity whatever um longevity so i know that this series is kind of sold as 30 days of 30 minute workouts and so and like when i did it the first time around in 2021 the point was that I did all 30 in a row without a day's rest but recovery is so important and even though I've programmed these 30 rows to try and give you that undulation between mid-intensity workouts like today and then tomorrow will be a low intensity workout again if you feel you're scraping the energy barrel and you're starting to get quite tired, fatigued, take a rest day, okay? The worst thing you want is to be completely run down or actually even worse than that would be injury to set in either because you're overworking your muscles or because you're a little bit fatigued and you start to do strange things with your technique to try to get through the half hour so Whereas these two minute cool downs are so important to try and reset your system after a tough row. 
nothing beats a rest day or two so <laughs> do make sure that if you're tired just take the rest day okay always listen to your body it's telling you things that some bloke on YouTube has no idea about so <laughs> right that's us done with the cool down you can of course continue to cool down or you can join me for some stretching now if you don't have time to stretch at one point please stretch your quads and your hamstrings and if you get a chance do your glutes as well and not in the shower please because I don't want you to slip and fall over that would be bad that would be painful okay so um let's try and stretch at one point or you can Join Stretchy John, he'll take you through some guided stretching if you have access to a stretching mat and stretching area, or I will take you through how to stretch if you don't have space, but you can still sit in your machine, okay? So, put your feet back in the foot plates, but keep the straps loose. Flick your toes against them to create a nice angle between your feet and your legs. Put your hands in the air and then fold forwards, okay? And then as you fold forwards, remember it's a fold, it's not a bend, okay? So, fold your chest. That, oops, I'm a bit too far forward in my seat. Your chest comes down towards your, your legs, okay? And that should really activate your hamstrings. In fact, the difference between doing it just then with a better seat position and the first time I just said it is huge. I'm now really getting that kind of zing, that stretchy zing into my hamstrings that I wasn't getting the first time around. And actually I've found, I've kind of bounced my knees in the amount of times I've been talking to you. So make sure and get those knees down. Don't lock them, okay? Don't want them to be an upside down U or, well, that would be a U. <laughs> uh, but make sure and get that stretch into your hamstrings. It's really important. Otherwise you're just wasting your, wasting your time. So, uh, what leg first? Oh yeah, uh, let's do glutes next. So one leg up on the rail, other leg comes up so that your heel is against the crook of your knee. Bring that leg across your body so you've got a straight line between your face, your knee and your foot. Hold it in place with one arm and then twist your body round to create that stretch run into your glute. And you can of course hold on to the back of the machine for stability if you wish. You don't have to anchor yourself with that other arm. You can quite easily just float it out and scratch your head and things. But um, as long as you're getting this stretch into your glute and you're stable, then fine. And remember, the real trigger of this stretch of the, is this leg coming across your body and the rotation is just like a kind of a way to focus it and help it. So make sure to keep that line straight between your face, your knee and your foot. Let's swap legs. Same thing again, except swapping everything around. And I'm rude as I face away from you. But it should, I mean, the more you do this, the more you factor this into your post row sessions, uh, the better it should feel. You should really at the end of a row, you should always feel that kind of zingy stretch feeling because your muscles have all been activated while you've been rowing. Um, so don't worry if every time you row, you're like, this doesn't feel any better. I'm not trying to uh, turn you into a circus performer who can suddenly turn your legs inside out and stuff. I'm just trying to make sure that you're nicely stretched off after a row. Let's do our quads next. So stand up next to the machine. Hopefully you've got space. You can rest one hand on the monitor to, to give yourself some stability. Flick your leg up behind you so that your heel is now up against your backside and give some kind of a pull. Um, I hold on to the, the kind of the bridge, the upper part of my foot uh, rather than my toes because I don't want to pull on my toes and then suddenly stretch um, the tendons through my toes and kind of going up into my shin and things. Although it can be useful to stretch that muscle in the front of your shin. Um, don't do it this way by, by pulling on your toes as you're trying to stretch your quads. Try and compound stretches aren't really that good at an idea. Swap legs. Although I tend to, on the, when we get to the triceps, I'll say, oh, you can lean to one side to do your triceps and to do your lats as well. That's kind of one of the only times that I really kind of add in a, kind of a compound stretch element. Uh, because you want to really just focus and say, right, this is the muscle I'm trying to stretch. Because you don't want to just like, half stretch something. Give it a good... A good wee workout. Right, let's get down and do our hip flexors. So one knee on the ground with your foot behind, your toes are touching the ground, heels up in the air. Then you've got your other foot. Oh God, I don't think I've fallen over that soon before, Cricky. Your other foot comes out in front of you, in front of you with your knee above it. It's because I'm slightly squint. This is what I worked out. I'm at an, a bit of an angle because of how the camera is. Anyway, that's my excuse. And then uh, push this, your hip that is, has the knee on the ground. With a good posture, push that hip forwards. Okay, you'll feel like you're kind of sinking down a little bit because of the change in this angle where it was at 90 degrees before now you're at 
well, I don't know, 100 degrees, say. So there's like an element that you're kind of coming down a bit. But keep, although you are going forwards and down, keep that good posture. Because if you feel like that and you just kind of lean forwards rather than actually pushing that hip and sinking down, um, if you just lean and kind of roll over your, your, with your back, you're not going to stretch anywhere near this muscle. And it so wants to be stretched. Okay, swapping legs. Whether it needs the stretch or not, well, that's up to you. Well, it's up to you and Jeff Cavalier from the Athlean X YouTube channel. So he has a great video, um, uh, basically about, uh, do you really need to stretch your hip flexors? Um, and it's like a test. You lie down on a uh, bench or a box or whatever, and then you can tell whether you've got tight, tight hip flexors or not. I think I do, and I've done his test and it's kind of like that, but um, <clears throat> I just know that uh, my hamstrings are definitely tight and I'm pretty sure as a result my hip flexors are tight, but I might be talking rubbish, you never know. Maybe I should go and see someone about it. Certainly when I did my back in a few months back, the osteopath said, you've got very tight hamstrings. So I figured that's probably my biggest issue. So let's do, uh, what should we do next? Let's do forearms and fingers and stuff. So hands in front of your face, push them together, and then bring them down in front of you. My thumbs are now hitting off my uh, heart rate monitor. But the important part is that my forearms are parallel to the floor. My fingers are pointing straight up. So I've got a nice right angle between fingers and forearms. And this is giving a nice stretch underneath my forearms. Actually, this is very nice. I've obviously been... Uh, working quite hard with them today, so, um, yeah, <laughs> it's quite, oh, yeah, it's quite nice. Although I've started, um, so I've, I'm, I know you don't care about this, but I'll change to my shoulders next. So sh shoulders, hands straight in front of you, hi, and then cross your body, loop your other arm over it so you can give a little bit of a force as you stretch your back across your body. Um, yeah, I was going to say, um, I'm working back in an edit suite, so I'm not working from home right now, so I have to drive to the whole commute thing, and I've started, um, Every time I'm just sitting in uh, like a st stationary traffic, I've got one of those power balls, you know, the things. Um, so I started to do them. And in Glasgow, there's a lot of stationary traffic. So I'm, when I'm uh, driving in in the morning, I get quite a good workout. I drive an automatic, so I don't know if that makes any difference in terms of if you're like, that's not safe to be using a power ball, but I'm stopped and I'm driving an automatic. So um, I'm hopefully I'm okay to be going with the power ball but it really does get your forearms that thing um and grip strength there's a big i did a, i worked on a program quite a while ago um tv program a while ago that investigated grip strength to your overall strength and how actually it's a really key indicator that if you've got quite a weak grip strength it's a big indicator of actually overall body strength isn't that good and conversely if you have a good grip strength it's a good indicator that you have a good overall body um strength so and the power ball is really good for grip strength. So uh, what we do next? Biceps. So hands behind your back as though you are flying or whether you're yeah, a ski jumper or whatever. And then rotate your thumbs outwards. And that stretches the long head, lengthens the long head of your bicep and gives it a nice stretch. Okay. Which is also nice. I don't know how much the power ball hits for the rest of your arms apart from like forearms and things. But um Again, this is, this is how I'm wedging in my high rocks thing in this video. Is it because of the things that the farmer carries? Um, or the farmer carries? Farmer carries? Farmer carries? Farmer carry? I don't know what part of that should be plural. Farmer carries? Farmer carry? Far, yeah, farmer carry. <laughs> farmer apostrophe S carry. Where you've got 22, 22 24 kilogram um, kettlebells and walking with them. It really hurts right up there. And I'm pretty, that's why I'm using the Powerball thing to try and help my forearms. Sorry, uh, triceps next. So hands up in the air, down your back. Okay. And then your, your uh, elbow will be pointing slightly up to the sky. Help it back there. There you go. And then um, hold that stretch. And this is where you can lean to the side if you want to try and add in a stretch to your lats. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to stay nice with a good posture. Helping that elbow point straight up to make sure and get that stretch into my triceps. Try not to kind of, I've got bad tendency of like kind of suddenly crunching everything on my shoulder through my traps and things. When I do this, I can kind of feel it all binding up. So try and be quite nice and loose up in your shoulders as you're doing this. I'm definitely better on my left arm than I am on my right arm when doing that. So just like I always say, just pay attention to how your body feels when you're doing things. If, so, if something, if you're stretching a muscle and something else feels sore and, and it's not the muscle you're meant to stretch, you're probably doing something slightly weird. <laughs> so like I say, my traps, that kind of that muscle that links up to your neck, 
just feels a little bit kind of bound up when I stretch my right tricep. So I'll have to, maybe I'll stretch in front of the mirror later and see exactly what I was doing, but it's very strange. There we go, we're all done. Um, yeah, ta-da. So we, uh, let's, I'm trying to think hashtags. Let's just do Powerball, why not? Don't think I've done Powerball. People think it's a lottery if you use a hashtag Powerball, but you can just type that in, hashtag Powerball, in a comment or uh, on a post on Facebook or Insta or Twitter or whatever. Just let me know you got this far through the video um, and let me know whether you enjoyed it. Did you do the music version? Did you do the non-music version? Um, are you enjoying the entire series? Is this your first one? Have you done all 18? Are you gonna do all 30? It's up to you, it's great. Um, but like I said, remember the importance of a rest day. If your body says, I want a rest, give it a rest. Okay? Okay. Um, there is, um, whether you do all 30, 30 days in a row, or whether you just do all 30 spread over an entire year, if you get in touch and tell me you did all 30, I will still send you a certificate. It doesn't matter how you do it. Okay. And that's it. We're done. Um, well, not done. We've still got another 11 to go. So it's day 20 will be coming up tomorrow, which hopefully you'll join me for, or you can take a look around the rest of the channel and watch one of my other videos, whether it's to row along with another workout or whether it's to uh, listen to one of my app reviews or technique hacks or whatever you want. Okay. Um, I just hope you find something there that entertains and interests you because otherwise I'm kind of wasting my time. But if that's the case, let me know. Let me know if you have any requests. Um, other than stop making videos, <laughs> um, then I'll do it. If you like, hey, can you look at this, do this, cover this? I'll try. So, uh, thank you so much for watching this one. Until one of my other videos, please take care of yourselves. Be well. Bye-bye.